Hi, I'm Greg Jackson with Bodybuilding.com here at the Muscle Farm Training Facility. Some of the fighters that I've trained from world champions George St. Pierre, John Bones Jones, to former champions like Rashad Evans, to future champions like Clay Guida, I've been very fortunate enough to be surrounded by the best fighters on the planet. I'm here today to talk to you about how to train, eat, and what supplements to take to make you the best MMA fighter you can be. When you get involved in MMA and you're saying, you know, what do I do? What's my structure? How many days do I train? Do I train eight hours a day? How long are even my sessions? The most important thing to remember is that less is more as far as volume in a day. So when somebody comes up to you and they say, I train eight hours a day, you are way, way off, way incorrect. You shouldn't train for more than an hour to an hour and a half per workout session. And at the beginning, that should be twice a day. In other words, one workout session in the morning and one workout session in the afternoon or the evenings. Training five to six days a week is ideal at the beginning. You wanna make sure that you do heavy intensity for at least five days a week. Two days of rest is really good, especially at first as you're getting sore and tired. You can up that to six days a week, but you wanna make sure that you listen to your body. Now, there's a difference between pushing, which is important, and not recovering. Believe it or not, for most fighters, overtraining is the worst thing you can do and the most common. Each day is gonna be a little different. Now you wanna work not only your conditioning, but your skill set as well. In other words, you wanna be acquiring new skills in addition to training your body for participation in the event. I recommend strength training and conditioning about three days a week, and then to supplement that, sparring. So let's take a typical Monday through Friday. Maybe Monday morning, you get up, you do your MMA sparring. That's just with the little MMA gloves, and you do that in the morning session. So maybe you learn a few moves, and then you get your sparring in. And Monday evening, I would do some strength and conditioning. You can either do you know, some weightlifting, depending on where you are, or you know, some sprints on the treadmill, rope slams. There's, we'll put a whole program for you together. And then Tuesday, it's gonna be the same deal. I like to do my skills in the morning, like your kickboxing class in the morning, let's say that as a Tuesday. So you're getting the technical skills that you need. And then after that, in the evening, I like to put a little bit of jujitsu on the ground and then immediately after that, some good cardio training. Wednesday would be a great day for wrestling in the morning, getting your skills set up with the wrestling. In the evening, maybe some pad work and just give the strength and conditioning a rest. Thursday, kickboxing again in the morning, jujitsu in the evening. Friday, MMA in the morning, and then a hard strength and conditioning day, maybe like a good mountain run. And Saturday, I like to really focus on just one session, one really hard session. That'd be a great day for pad work. Just burn it out on the pads. All you need is once a day. So you've got a great structure from Monday through Saturday that won't overtrain you, give you new skills, but at the same time, you're getting that strength and conditioning that you need. The way training is very important. What you want to really focus on is exploding. You want good explosions. So Olympic lifting is phenomenal. You don't really need heavy volume. In other words, you don't need to be doing sets of 50. You need to do sets of five to eight, maybe 15 if you're doing inverted rows. But you really want to focus on controlling and then exploding. Because so much of fighting is isometric tension where you're holding something really tense. Like when you're you're locked in a, in a grappling situation, you're very tense. And then when you're trying for your takedown, you've got to explode. So holding an isometric tension exercise and then really practicing your explosion, that trains your body to really kind of get used to that before you do it in sparring. Keeping that in mind, you also, of course, want to get stronger. And so doing 25 reps of whatever you're doing isn't really going to make you that much stronger. It'll give you endurance, but your endurance needs to be isometric based to explosion and then recovery. So you're not like a bodybuilder where you're gonna do your set and then wait 20 minutes before your next set. You need to do your set and as soon as you recover, do it again. Because isometric, explosion, recovery, that's the name of the game, those three things. When it comes to diet while you're training for a fight, there's a lot of different things you can do. But my philosophy is eat to perform. In other words, you want to have the right food in your body so that you perform the right way. Some people cut out carbs and all that stuff. And I like a good carb to protein ratio. Now, when you're losing weight, as you diet, obviously your diet's gonna change a little bit. But an overall good structure, especially at the beginning of your camp, six small meals a day, 
and make sure that those meals will give you the energy that you need to perform and practice. Listen, you're not going to get any better or any stronger if you eat one meal a day or two meals a day, even if they're giant meals, you're going to gas out. The great thing about six meals a day is every two and a half hours, two hours, you eat a little something, you keep your metabolism going, which helps you burn fat, and it also keeps your energy level up. One of my favorite meals is a good serving of chicken breast, you know, about a fist size, and then the same with sweet potatoes. That's my, oh, I love that all day long. Maybe some peanut butter on top of that. That's a great, you know, maybe six, 700 calorie meal. And then the other ones are gonna be smaller or larger depending on the, where you are during the day. When you're eating your food, I actually do believe in eating clean, especially if you have to make weight. Now listen, a fighter lives and dies by their diet, especially if you're heavy. Let's say that you know, you're 200 pounds and you gotta make 170. You've gotta be real meticulous with every meal. My advice is to get a very professional dietitian that evaluates your workouts and your workout style and then gives you a meal plan based on that. Myself, I take a cheat meal once a week. And I recommend that for your fighters too. Listen, you're in the grind. You're in the grind and it is day in and day out. If you're actually training to fight, it's day in and day out and you need a little something. Now, your cheat days, you can't go nuts. In other words, your cheat day, you can eat what you want when you want, but you shouldn't be eating a whole pizza in camp. Like that's just ridiculous or like eight milkshakes. You want to still eat clean. It's just you can eat a little bit more and you don't have to be nearly as strict. But for me, that's a great psychological anchor because no matter how bad you're hurting, let's say your cheat day is a Saturday. No matter how bad you're hurting on Thursday, you're hungry, you're tired. Uh, mentally, for me, it's a great trick to just say, you know what, two more days. All I gotta do is suffer two more days and I get a big treat. So little stuff like that can really help you out if you're dieting hard. The supplements are one of the most important things in a fight camp. Having the right supplements can really make the difference between winning and losing. For me, the most important supplement of all, before I even talk about any of it, is Recon. The Recon is the post-workout supplement, and it can literally make or break you. If you, within a 20-minute window, so you get done working out, let's say you know, you're hitting pads or whatever you're doing, you get done working out, you got 20 minutes after that workout, to get protein in you, so you get one of those muscle gels and you get that in you, and then you get your recon in you. Because if you don't get that recon in you, your subsequent workout, that second workout, will either be the best workout or the worst workout, depending if you took or did not take your recon. The assault in the morning, I'm all about it. You get up, you has that caffeine in there, it gets you going, it's great. Now, if you need to lose weight, the shred matrix, the muscle farm stuff like that is great. Keeps your metabolism going all day long, has some great stuff in there. So if you're trying to lose weight, that shred matrix is where it is. Using the uh, battle fuel is also very important. It gives you a good testosterone boost, keeps your energy levels up. So those are the four that I really use. But the most important to me of those four is definitely the recon. I changed my supplement uh, requirements for my athletes because I like to cycle on and off of them. Before, I recommend before you get onto your supplements, onto your camp, doing some kind of cleanse, you know, eating really clean, getting everything out of you so that your supplements will take max effect. For me, that's what their job is. Their job is to make you perform. Now, throughout the year, you can definitely use Recon, you can definitely lose a lot of, use a lot of these supplements here and there, but you really need to focus in on them right before a training camp. So, yes, you can use supplements all year long, as long as you're training, but uh, you really want to get strict with them when you start camp. I have seen a ton of results with good supplementation from my athletes. And you can really tell the ones that do it and don't. Like a lot of times, the amateurs will come in and they did, eh, they're not really into supplements or they just don't know, they're not educated on it. And so they train and then you watch the guys, and they do well, and then you watch the guys that are really, you know, they're on it, they're taking their uh, assault before, their recon after, their multivitamins, they're really on these supplements and you can see the difference in performance within two weeks. Within two weeks I can tell you right away, I'll point out, this guy needs to get on supplements, this guy is obviously on them and doing very well. Um, we have an incredibly high winning percentage, uh, we are known as a, as a school at Jackson's MMA for being able to push the pace, to really grind through. So not only do we have this technical side of us, but we really have this mental strength and listen, if your body isn't there for you, it doesn't matter how strong mentally you are, if your body's not there, it's not going to work. So you need supplements to perform, period. Once again, this is Greg Jackson with Bodybuilding.com at the fabulous Muscle Farm facility. 
If you want to learn more about everything I talked about today, all about MMA and how to get involved with your supplementation, nutrition, training, check out the link below. If you guys want more great videos on MMA, MMA training, check out bodybuilding.com or musclefarm.com. They got everything you need. Guys, go out, train hard, have fun, and remember, do it for the love.